enriched uranium. When the reactor is started up for the first time, a neutron is fired at a uranium atom. That uranium atom splits, or fissions, releasing energy and freeing more neutrons that trigger the same process of splitting in surrounding uranium atoms. Once this chain reaction becomes self-sustaining, the reactor is said to be critical and is generating an enormous amount of heat. Once we've ensured that the, the design is correct, the instrumentation is correct, we then move up in, in power in gradual steps, uh, resulting in, in two weeks' time uh, full power operations. The huge amount of energy the reactor is creating is used to heat water. The water, under extremely high pressure, which prevents it from boiling, passes a heat exchanger, which contains another circuit of water at a much lower pressure. This water does boil and creates steam. The steam drives turbines and the turbines generate all the power the submarine needs. The Astute is, in part, an old-fashioned steam engine, though coupled with 21st century nuclear technology. Yeah, it's been a, not just a tough week, it's been a tough few months really getting here. Yeah, definitely. So it's the, it is, um, it's a relief, I guess, for a lot of people who work very, very hard. And fingers crossed it should all go smoothly and uh, we're one step closer to exiting Barrow and taking this submarine to sea and handing it over to the Royal Navy. But as that moment gets closer, an unexpected, an unforeseen obstacle appears from nowhere. And this one could stop the submarine leaving Barrow altogether. This is number one Seagate, which is a flat gate by design and it's rather like a drawbridge and at the moment she's laying down in the recess and we're unable to shut the gate uh, and, and make this area non-tidal. The submarine only has a certain amount of time to get from the dock to the deep water and without the gate this timing is next to impossible to control meaning the Astute's exit would become a huge gamble. The only way we can take the submarine out now with one gate out of operation is to time it uh, precisely such that we're in the lock at the right height of tide uh, and then take us straight out to sea. You then have to accelerate the exit speed through the channel. You'd be doing handbrake spins around the corners. It's just, uh, it's not uh, something we would consider. With the risk of grounding the submarine a serious one, the only choice is to raise the lock gate from the seabed. And although the gate is actually owned by Barrow's Port Authority, everybody agrees to work together to find out why it isn't working and then hopefully fix it. With daylight, the fault is clearly evident. Well, here's the, this is the south one where you can see a crack on it, but the, on the north side, on the far side, this actually sheared off completely. It's a big pain, yes, it's a lot of work. It's a mammoth task. The gate is over 20 years old, but a team of engineers will have to figure out a way to fix it. We do have the nuclear submarine going out and salt. We, we have a very vested interest in getting this gate um, up and running and, and operable. It's been a few weeks now since uh, since you guys have been in town. Um, the gate has moved on uh, significantly, really, from, from where we were three weeks ago. The main uh, issue we had was the fact that this bracket here uh, had failed. Um, we, when we recovered the gate, we, we weren't given an awful lot of surprise in terms of uh, the, the extent of the work. Uh, we have fitted initial uh, brackets to the structure, basically just to make the, uh, the structure a bit more in integral. The gate may be fixed, but the job isn't over. It's no easy task to reinstall the 324-ton piece of steel. It's uh, about the same position it was in when we actually took it out about two and a half months ago. It's a drawbridge action gate, um, four times a day it's cycled uh, on each tide. And it's basically operated from the winch house, which is located just behind. For the next two days, divers and engineers will work around the clock to hit their deadline. Without that gate in place, this submarine will not leave Barrow until it's back where it belongs. It's gone very close to programme, and most programmes slip quite a lot. But this one hasn't slipped too much, and uh, today's a big day. It is a big sigh of relief. With the gate back in place and the dock fully functional, there's nothing left to stop the astute from finally leaving Barrow, except the weather. And the events of the last few months mean the warm summer is a distant memory. She will be sailing in November. Commander Andy Coles, the captain of the boat, 
is preparing his crew for the exit. We're just doing the final preparations and final checks, ready to sail tomorrow. I'll show you as much as I can within the bounds of legality. <laughs> Welcome on board. Just come this way, please. We're in the centre of the control room, and in front of me, I've got ship control. To the left-hand side, I've got the sonar, and to the right-hand side, I've got the combat system. This is where I sit, and when I'm not here, this is where the officer of the watch sits. And this is my cabin. This is where I sleep and work. So I spend my time between the control room and here. I have screens here which show me the tactical picture and I can see what's going on on the periscope. OK, I'm now converting my chair into the bunk, which is where I sleep at night. I've got communications right next to me and everything's been aligned up so it's above the level of the bunk. So in bed, when they call me, I can see everything from bed. So it's quite good. You can tell what day of the week it is by the food. OK? For example, you always have fish and chips on a Friday, and you get to look forward to those nights as well. We'll get all the ugly ones out. OK, this is the senior eights mess, if you'd like to follow me. OK, this is the senior eights mess. This is one of the three messes we have on board. On the other side of the corridor, this is the junior eights mess, exactly the same as the senior eights mess, but this is for the junior eights. No, it's a little bit more homely now. We've got, like, nice chairs and that lot. More comfortable living arrangements. It's got a PlayStation, Xbox, big telly, media centre, and it's just coming together now, so we're all ready to go to see in our respects. I think you have to have a certain temperament to be a submariner. You have to be able to get on with people and work in a very small space. We don't tend to be quite so clipped and so formal as the other areas of the Navy. It's, it's just a matter of the environment which we live in. The senior eights live in two different mess decks, and this is one of them. We utilise the maximum amount of space using three racks on either side. Each man has at least one locker, and underneath each bunk is stowage as well. But we're experts at living on the minimum amount of clothing. We're up on the forward navigation position, commonly known as the bridge on the submarine. As you can see, we get a very good view from here. You can, you, it's even more precise, I think, than being on the bridge of a ship because you've actually, you can feel the elements working with you or working against you, and you're able to take action against them quickly. Tomorrow represents a really key point for us, which is the move away from this dock down to Ramsden Dock. And so, therefore, we'll be, with the tug's assistance, we'll be going through that bridge and down to Ramsden Dock tomorrow. Clearly, trying to sail in mid-November is, is a risk with the weather, and the weather forecast over the next two days is, is not ideal. We've already got a freshening wind, which we can feel in our hair now, and it's going to get stronger over the next 24 hours, but everybody's attention is on us at the moment. I mean, this is a key point for the Royal Navy, bringing astute out. And so, if I get that wrong, I'm certainly aware of the amount of scrutiny that will be coming down on me. It's November the 14th, 2009, and the first new British submarine for 10 years is about to sail out into the open sea for the very first time. Originally planned for the summer, the submarine's last hurdle to exit is the uncertainty of the British weather. Submarines manoeuvre extremely well underwater, but on the surface they're not quite so good at manoeuvring, so we need some tug assistance. We're going to bring alongside four very powerful um, tugs uh, and then we will manoeuvre the submarine through the lock system under the Michelson Road Bridge round to Ramsden Dock uh, in preparation for exit. There's been a lot of effort from everyone involved here. It's been fraught with some interesting conversations and some emotions that have come out. The crew are ready, the tugs are ready, um, the wind has finally dropped. So we've got one window of opportunity before it starts getting dark. So it's a good day.
lost up. Yeah. It's quite narrow here, it's 28 metres wide, so it is quite a, a challenging thing. And you can see the challenge to be able to get through this uh, narrow gap. We've been eating, drinking, breathing the submarine and, and getting it ready for this moment. Now that we, we can step back and, and watch it go through, it's a really, a really a great moment, actually. Something that the country should be really proud of. It's the first time that we've launched a new submarine out of here for 10 years. So it's, it's, it's a hell of an achievement, actually, yeah. The whole process will take two days, but at 9.15 on Sunday the 15th of November, the gate holding back the sea has been safely lowered, and the submarine leaves Barrow for the first time. She will never return. Once free of shallow water, the tugs will depart and her reactor will take over, silently powering the astute through the ocean. Started off as a, a team leader uh, on the astute that's just gone out. Uh, oh, fantastic pride, that's what I felt. And you know, we want to see more of these. And not with 10 year gaps either. I work on boat too. I need to make sure that we knuckle down and we can have a day like this in years to come. It was built slowly and carefully by a lot of dedicated people. And it's a wonderful thing to see it go. And I was surprised actually to see how fast it was, it was cruising along there. It's taken 14 years to get to this moment, but for almost 5,000 people in the shipyard, Tomorrow is another working day. They'll clock on as usual and continue building the next astute submarine, one of the world's most complicated 